All right. Turbine auxiliaries. This overlaps with talking about the turbine itself some. Uh, what we're doing now is EHC, which stands for electrohydraulic control, and it's an oil system. So what is it controlling? Steam control valves. All right. Steam control valves. So we've got two main steam stop valves. We've got four control valves, flow control valves. And then we have two intercept valves. So I gotta draw my boiler over here. You got a boiler. I come out of the boiler. It's a main steam header. And you've got 2,500 pounds of steam. And that goes through two main steam stop valves. And then that goes to a common steam chest. Then it goes to four control valves, and then they go into the turbine, that high pressure part of the turbine, and you've got five sets of blades, you've got ten sets of blades, you've got five sets that are attached to the rotor, and five sets in between that are redirecting the steam as the team, steam expands, spins the turbine, blah, blah, blah. That's not really what we're trying to get at. What we're trying to get at is how these control the steam. And I guess I, I got to kind of connect to what this does. So then the steam exhausts from the HP turbine. It goes into the back pass and gets heated back up. And then goes to the intercept valves before it goes into the IP turbine. IP is intermediate pressure. We started out at like 2,500 pounds and now we're at like 700 pounds. 600 pounds? Somewhere in there. All right. So the EHC skid. It's a little oil tank, like 500 gallon tank. And on top of it, you've got two pumps. And you've got two accumulators. Man. Sucking for symmetry today. accumulator do? It helps hold your pressure. It helps hold your pressure. It provides a surge volume. So, and the analogy I use is it's like a water tower, right? So it gets filled up with oil and then there's like a bladder and then there's high pressure gas on one side. I don't think it's a bladder. I think it's a cylinder in these things. I think you're a piston type. Yeah, piston. So, the oil pressure pushes against the piston, and as it rises up, it compresses the gas. And then when you need more flow, then since these pumps, to deal with the surge, you, you know, the pressure immediately drops, and then this piston is going to push more oil back into the system, make up for it while the pumps adjust. How much pressure are we talking about? 2,400 pounds, that is correct. And there's a pressure switch. 
and then there's a weekly test where we isolate it, and then we vent off the vent off the pressure, and then it goes, oh, whoa, oh, oh, I'm less than 1700, and it starts standby pump. And we say, okay, test good, and then we align the switch back up, and then you shut off the, the pump, and swap pumps every week. There's also a manual bypass valve. So when you start the pumps, this bypass valve should be all the way open so that you don't have this pumps trying to slam 2,400 pounds of pressure into the system, right? So then they start and then you pinch back on this bypass and then when pressure starts to climb, you slow down and you ease it all the way shut. These provide oil to the main steam stop valves and to the control valves and to the intercept valves. The intercept valve is kind of two valves inside one body. So you have a stop valve and then you also have a control valve. So when this, if this, it's kind of like a concentric ring kind of thing going on. So if the stop valve is shut, then it doesn't matter what the control valve is doing, you're not getting any steam through it. If the, control, if the stop valve part is open, then the control valve can throttle that steam back. Now, practically speaking, these things stay open all the time because there's no reason we would want to put steam through the HP turbine and not the IP turbine. So pinching them back is just a loss of, loss of efficiency. The reason they do have some throttling capacity is supposed to be for overspeed. So what's normal speed on the turbine? 3,600 3, RPM. So somewhere around 3,650, this control valve is supposed to start throttling back to bring that in. But honestly, if you've gotten to 3650, you're not synced to the grid anymore because I've never seen it over 3602. So either something's gone wrong with the entire grid and everything on this side of the Mississippi River is fucked up, or the breakers tripped and were no longer magnetically linked to the grid at all. If the breaker tripped, that should have tripped the turbine, and all of those valves should have already gone shut. Already. Things take time to happen. All right, so the main steam stop valves are oil to open, spring to shut. The control valves are piston oil to move in either direction. Intercept valve is a stop valve, so it's like oil to open, spring to shut, and the uh, the second half of the intercept valve is a control valve, so it's oil to move in either direction. If you the, the valves, let's see, there is a servo valve, which is controlling how much oil goes on top of the piston and how much oil goes on the bottom of the piston. Right? This is something that's actually throttling the pressure to get it where it's supposed to be. And then there are two trip valves, either of which is able to bleed off all the oil and make these things go to the, all of them go to the shut position. Which creates an additional chance of some, a component failing and causing this to trip, or causing one of these valves to go shut. Which isn't quite like tripping, but man, it would swing the unit around pretty good. But it adds reliability in the sense, I mean, we're less, we're, we're liable to swing the unit unnecessarily if a trip valve fails that we didn't want to fail, but we're liable to protect the unit in the event that a trip valve fails and it didn't trip when it was supposed to, then that would be the worser condition, right? Because we talk about overspeed, well, the centripetal force could conceivably 
swing those larger these larger stages all the way apart, throw, throw them all over the damn place. Somewhere around 6,000 RPM, it would be a bad, bad day for uh, one point. And you're out here. The county as a whole. <laughs> the company as a whole. <laughs> and particularly anyone that was on shift and uh, walking the turnpike. There's also a return path for all these things that goes back to the tank. It's one of those, uh, what you call it, cemetery pipes too? It's pipe inside the pipe, what you call it? Oh, concentric. Concentric. I don't think so. I don't think so. No. And these things don't have the kind of flow on them that the blue wall system does either. I mean, these are little lines that are controlling small pistons. I guess it may seem stop valves aren't small, but, but it's not a lot of fluid to get them to do what they're going to do. So it's not a lot of flow. A lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure. How do we control that pressure? Hydraulic. Ah, okay, so. <laughs> It is hydraulic pressure. We do have accumulators to help maintain it. But if something makes the pressure drop and the accumulator go, these pumps have to pick back up and make up that flow to get the accumulators recharged, get things back, back stable. Uh, I haven't talked a lot about how pumps work in general. A positive displacement pump, this is a piston type pump. But to have smooth flow, smooth, steady pressure, they've got nine separate pistons built into this thing. And you've got this rotating body, and it's like a gun barrel, where the, the barrel is rotating and the pistons are, rota are rotating with it. And so you've got four pistons that are on the suction side, and four pistons that are on the pressure side, and it's all kind of fucking going at once. And by changing, there's a plate that changes its angle, and that changes the amount of stroke you get out of these pistons, and that determines how much pressure, no, how much flow you get. Swash plate. What do they call it? Swash plate. Swash plate? I don't know that name anymore. I don't know either. And there is a, I know that that wasn't an especially useful description. Uh, I've got a link to another YouTube video that will play after this one. And uh, I'll show it to you guys in class in a minute. Anything else on AC, Jackie? Filter. Ah, excellent. All right, so there is hot ah, coolers. Yes. Cool. Cool conditioning. Filter so There is a conditioning pump, and there are two filters. And then there is another goofy little conditioning pump that uses electrostatic magic to clean up. Electrostatic magnet, magic. All right, so uh, there's charged plates. And this, the stuff, the oil gets pumped across these plates and stuff in the oil will get magnetized and attracted to one plate or the other. And then eventually the stuff builds up on these plates and they have to be, the thing has to be taken offline and cleaned and then put back in service. Special tanks will do. Far retardants. Well, if you get missed, it, it'll still burn, but take the flame away from it and quit. Okay. Learn me something. I got a Twana Rupert. Got it. And there's a sight glass. And then there's coolers. Man, how long will the coolers go on the flow path? It's the external. Or so, what, yeah, yeah, is it with the strainers? They got their own pump, everything. Coolers. Well, they pump back on? 
So come around for the uh, header for you. Okay, so it's Those are strainers. And these are coolers. And then you've got flow cycle cooling water. That's counter flow. Sometimes after startup, this temperature will come in the alarm, and it's because this bypass valve doesn't get closed all the way. And it's one of those double nut lock jobs, right? So the vibrations will make that come back open if it didn't get torqued down. <clears throat> so you got the micro filter, we take a reading on it, and then there's the filter with the little panel. On the back side. On the back side. side. Green and red in here. What's the green and red one? If it's red, it, they'll stop doing it. Is that the micro filter still yeah. though? Yeah. It's both of them might be a micro filter, but if the one on the front that you actually read the pressure on and the back one just the flat. Side. Right, so so there's a DP across the micro filters, <coughs> and that has a flag that turns red if the DP gets high. And then the one on the back side. Is the electrostatic jobber. Probably should have looked up some names before I uh, start class. All right. And that is electrohydraulic control oil. 